use pandas and that's what we're going to use now we're going to use pandas to perform operations on um, some excel files and csv files and we're going to try to see how it helps us why it helps us where it helps us so this helps you perform a lot of operations on large files you can perform statistical operations on it like aggregation functions or so on you can clean the data sets you can perform a lot of different operations based on them that's one thing you can just know and that's why we have this particular package or library that we call pandas that we're going to use so i've just specified this earlier what is it for and why do we use it pandas in short stands for panel data you can import sql tables spreadsheets csv files clean data set handle missing values change any data type or formats perform aggregation or statistics but one thing you cannot do in pandas directly is visualization think about this if a client asks you to walk through their company's last 10 years of sales data and you give them an excel file i've gone through them i've calculated the thing just read this excel file you understand everything the client won't do that won't be able to do that right nobody will be able to do that easily so to understand that better i just want to take this example and that's where my browser crashed and i realized hey my browser has crashed so the example i want to take here is this take a look at 5 years of data you can see what has happened over the 5 years or you can see what has happened over the 5 days all this data is like hundreds and hundreds of different values if you see this in an excel file it makes no sense it becomes very complicated to read if you see it in an excel file however when you see it in a graph it's much much easier to just read and understand it that is why graphs are important so one thing pandas directly doesn't do is provide you the ability to read things in a graph and that's quite important so to do that for visualization we will use a couple of additional libraries called matplotlib and cbon these are the two additional libraries we're just going to use now uh, let's go ahead and continue from here we're going to start to learn pandas then we'll look at matplotlib then we'll look at cbon and i'll just close this numpy basics markdown so the cells are going to be hidden i'll only have pandas which i can start with again these things can be added as a comment here so that we can see and understand what it is where it's used and everything anyway let's start with this the first thing for us to use pandas is to install it pandas is again an additional third party library that you need to install so let's use pip install pandas once done pandas will be installed and we can get started with it it's probably downloading or taking some time we'll wait a few seconds for it and we can get started after that by the time it performs it um i will just share another data set that we're going to use i think i might have this data set from 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 one of the previous sessions uh let me see if i do if so i'll just share this it's a really wonderful data set to just start working around um so we have it i'm just going to share this here here we go pandas a oh, pokemon um this is where things get different i'm not going to get i'm not going to take a very boring or complex data set because we are our purpose is not about data set our purpose is about learning pandas with fun the best way to do that is to learn it with the data set of pokemon it is utterly pointless and uh, its only purpose is to learn pandas not to learn pokemon just in case right So um if you're okay with this data set just let me know however if you'd like to take a completely different data set however uh, we can do that that's never an issue it's all about the functions we run on top of it so you can let me know whatever kind of data set you want other than this 
If not, we'll go with this. So we have the following data set where uh, we have numbering of Pokemons, their names, um, their type, their secondary type. I guess this is health points, if I remember right. I haven't seen this since childhood. So their attack power, defense power, special attack, special defense, the speed, which generation they're from, and are they legendary, true or false? This is the data we have. You can see there are some missing values as well. We're gonna see how to work around with missing values later on. The main purpose of this data set is only to take a few short minutes and just learn some basic functions so that we can apply those functions in the sales data set up next. That is our main goal. That is our main problem. So let's start with us. Oh yeah, first I need to share this data set, which I haven't done. So um, within, okay, let me rename this as just data sets. And within data sets, I'm just gonna copy this Pokemon data set and I'm just gonna save it here. Uh, you can access it directly using the link that I'll share if you would like to. This will make it slightly easier for you to access. Now, once you have this data set locally, we can start reading it. Now, here's the thing. Pandas is able to read a lot of different kinds of data. It can read CSV files, database, uh, some compressed files, Excel files, so on. Now, here comes the question for you, you and a valid question as well. If I can do a lot of things with VBA in Excel, why do I need pandas? The idea is pretty simple. Pandas helps you go through very large data set. If you try to work around very huge data set in let's say VBA and Excel, it might just crash your Excel um, application because you cannot run through one lakh rows or one million rows and perform some operation very quickly. That's going to take quite an amount of time, right? So the whole purpose of this is to utilize pandas so that these tasks are performed with the least amount of time taken. Uh, that's the whole purpose. And uh, these can also be done uh, by making them sort of, uh, how do we say this, uh, automated. One other way to make sure that is that you can make them uh, automated as well. So these are the two main purposes for this. Now, since we got to know this, since we understood why pandas and uh, uh, why not something else which we could use and why pandas are uh, quite useful or important. With that particular idea, let's go ahead and let's get started. First thing, let's read this data set. Let's read this Excel file within our application. To read this Excel file, Again, remember, since we are reading an Excel file, we have all the functions we need to perform this within Pandas. There might be one or two additional packages we need, which I will explain ahead in time. Yeah, it's not installed. I think we might need to install one or two additional packages. I will explain that ahead in time, but let's start with this. Just like how we import NumPy as NP in short, we often import Pandas as PD in short. This basically helps us to write pandas functions quicker, nothing else. Instead of print, we write IC, which is faster. And for coders, writing two characters are much faster and efficient in many ways. So yeah, that's why we basically do this. So let's use pandas dot a function that is a read 
So there are a lot of different files you can read. You can read HTML files, you can read JSON files, you can read Parquet files, SQL, SQL query, SQL table. You can perform a lot of different things. I'm going to read an Excel file in our case. We're just going to read a simple Excel file that is going to be Pokemon data dot XLSX. We are in the same directory. Please note I'm reading this Excel file. It's in the same directory where we are. That's why I can directly open that particular file. If it's in a different directory, you have to provide the path. That's one different thing you need to know. So we're just going to directly read this. After reading this, we're just going to store it in a data frame. Done. Let's run this. Okay, as expected, we need an additional module called OpenPy Excel. So let's install this as well. Pip install OpenPy Excel. So OpenPy Excel is uh, a package that Pandas uses in order to work with Excel files. Since it does not install it automatically, we have to install it separately. So let's do that. It's done. Now let's get back and run. So please remember OpenPy Excel is a package that we need in order to work with pandas and Excel files specifically. Now, once this is done, let's again import pandas as PD and we read the Excel file and we store it. Once we do this, it'll go ahead and store it. Now, here's the thing. Here's the basic thing that we need to know about pandas. Pandas has two data types, two important data types rather. One data type is where you have a single column of data. Another data type is where you have a table of data. So you can read a table of data like the Pokemon data that we are reading, or you can read a single column of data. So whenever you read a single column of data, it is called a series. And whenever you read a table of data, it is stored in a data type called data frame. So just remember, a single column is stored in series. A complete table is stored in a data frame. These are the two different data structures that is available within Pandas. Series is a data structure to store a single column. Data frame is a data structure to store a table or a tabular form of data. Now, uh, I'm just going to print type of df. Now, please observe here. I'm not writing print type of df. I'm just writing type of df. Whenever you have a single print statement and you just want to run it and get the output on the cell, you can you don't have to write print. It will directly give you the output. So this is one thing that you need to know here. However, take a look at this. If I print one, it will only print one. It's going to ignore the previous one. So when you have multiple statements you want to print, please don't do this. Only when you want to print one output, you can do this. It's going to give you the output. Now let's run this. Let's go to the next cell and continue ahead. So we got to know its type is a data frame, which means it's a table data. Let's see how this data appears. So there are some simple functions in uh, um, data frame that will help you view things. There is head function. This will view first X rows. There is similarly tail function. This will help you view last x rows and x is phi by default so if i just print df dot head and run it it's going to print first five rows of the data frame similarly if i want some different amount of rows i can use df dot head of 10. it's going to print first 10 rows instead similarly if you want to print last five rows let's say df dot tail it's going to print you last five rows and so on just some basic things that we need to know about this. Anyway, uh, let's move ahead to the next and most important thing. 
rows and columns. Now comes the important part. In a data frame, we have two highly important functions, very important functions. These functions are used to access and filter data. You can use dot lock or dot ilock. These two functions help you read and filter data. The idea of lock is you read data using label, label as in column name. ILOCK means you read the data using index location. That's it. That's the only difference that we need to know. LOCK is used to access data in based on label name and ILOCK is used to access data using a uh, index. So let's write this down here. LOCK access data using labels. Labels in other words are column names for our reference. So column names are these hash name type one type two. These are column names. We can use column names to access them or we can use ILOCK that is access data using index. That is this is index zero column. This is column index one column index two column index three and so on. So it's up to you to access in either way and I'm going to walk through them in detail ahead. So let's go ahead. Let's start with some basic thing. If you want to access any particular column, if you want to access any column, you can directly write. Remember, we already have re read this data set or data frame as in pandas read Excel of this Excel file and we have stored it in the data frame. From here, we are performing the rest of the operations. In this data frame, if you write dot columns, it will print a list of the columns that it has. These are all the column names. If you specify any particular column, you can access that column as well. I'll write df of name, sorry, in name. When you run this, it's gonna give you the whole column name. So these are some basic operations that we just need to know uh, so that we get to know how to access some column names. Instead of accessing one column name, you can access multiple column names as well. If you wanna access name as well as health points, you can do this. But one little problem, whenever you wanna access multiple columns, this is a theme that we will constantly see in pandas. Please remember, we're gonna see this theme constantly in pandas. Whenever you wanna access multiple columns, use this multiple columns within a list. Because in DF, when you use brackets, when you use square bracket, that means you're accessing index. When you're accessing index, you have to specify column name in one single value. And that one single value can either be a single column name or it can be a list of column names. You cannot separate them otherwise. And that's how you can get multiple columns as well. So yeah, uh, this is just a basic thing that we needed to know till now. And uh, one other thing, let's write df of name. We know this is one column. So if you write here, type of df of Okay, I'm so sorry. I think I made a mistake. Let's run this. Let's add another one. Let's print type of df of name. If you run it, you see that it's a series because name is a single column and a data type data structure for single column in pandas is a series. A data structure for a table is a data frame. That's the basic difference we need to know when it comes down to pandas. Uh, I hope this so far basic idea is clear. We haven't even started lock and I lock, which will begin now. But before we begin that, I hope this idea so far uh, is simple and clear. If there are any queries still here, please feel free to let me know. Take a few seconds. Uh, if you want me to walk through any part of it again, or if you have any additional query like why do we do certain things so why do we not do certain things whatever it could be 
uh, please feel free to ask. I will go through your queries and respond to the same. Any queries that you might have, please feel free to ask. I'll uh, respond to the same. If there are no queries, we will move ahead. Right, no queries. Perfect. So let's go on. Let's start with iLock. As we learned earlier, it is index location. Right. So let's try to access indices. You can use df.ilock of a simple logic. iLock will use row and column. First is row, second is column. That's it. If you remember this, that should be good enough for us to understand the rest of it. So df.ilock will have row comma column. Now remember, row can be a single value or a series of values like one to five or a series of values with steps like one to 10, skipping two at a time. In other words, row can be a single index or start colon stop or start colon stop colon step. You can use it in any way. So let's start with this. df dot i lock of zero colon five. Now observe this. In this case, I'm writing of the row only. I have not written column. So since column is not written, it will print all columns. Since you haven't specified column value, it will print all columns, but rows will be limited. Rows will be zero to five. If you run this, it's gonna give you zero to fifth row. Zero, one, two, three, four, because uh, five is the stop criteria. That's what we don't print. Row number zero to five, or particularly four but columns is everything. However, if you want to print columns, you can write df.ilock of only columns. That is zero column five, but row value cannot be empty. If you want all row to be printed, just use colon. Colon indicates that everything. This is ilock where all rows zero to four columns. If you run this, you'll get column number zero, column number one, column two, column three, column four. This is additional index that uh, uh, pandas creates for our visual understanding. We have a column called number, which is why both seem confusing, but there is a separate column that it creates like this. That's just one thing we need to know. Now, let's go ahead to the next part. Um, this is some basic idea of how we get to know um, ILOC or how we get to access index-based locations. There's another way to do it instead of index-based locations, that is df.lock. For us to understand df.lock, we need to first understand how it works. Let me specify. Assume that you have a data frame of just five rows. Let's say row is one, two, 10, 12, 15. These are the values you have, five rows. Now, when you perform df.lock, what happens is df.lock will take input as true and false. So if I write false, if I create one more column as false, false, true, false, and false. And I write df.lock of this particular series. Remember, this is our data frame. This is a series we have just created. If I write df.lock of this series, it will match them. And wherever the value is true, wherever the value is true, it will filter them 
and give us only those values rest it will ignore this is what df.log does it takes conditions and performs this now to understand this to understand this example i'll give you a simple simple idea of all the pokemon that we have i want to know which pokemon or fire type let's look at this df.head there are a lot of different types of Pokemon. I want to know which Pokemon or fire type. That is, type one column should be fire. To do that, here's what I'll do. I'll write df of type one. It will give me where type one is available. And I will compare it with fire. When you do that, you'll get either false or true. This happens for every row. So please observe the difference. If I just write df of type one, it will give me this entire series where it's grass, 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 fire, rock, psychic, and fire, and so on. Now, if I compare it with fire, is the first one equal to fire? No. So that means it will give me false. Is the second one equal to fire? Again, no, it will give me false. Is the last one equal to fire? Yes. Then it will give me true. This is how you get false, false, and so on. Now you can use this in the last thing that we just learned. Okay, I think I erased this, which I cannot access. But uh, yeah, I hope you remember this simple idea where uh, uh, you can use df.lock of a series where you have false, true, false, true, and so on. Whichever column or sorry, whichever row index has true, it will give you that row index of the data frame. So in this case, I'm specifying this as df of type one is equal to fire. So wherever type one fire is true, that row index it will return. So if you look at row index number four, it has fire. So I will get that row. That is what I want. I want all the rows that have type one as fire. So to do that, I just have to specify this within df.lock. So within df.lock, I'll specify a series which will have only true or false. And wherever it is true, it will return only that. If you run this, you'll get all the Pokemon that are fire type. This is how you can filter. Filter using a condition that can return true or false and apply df.lock over it. So it will only give you the statements or rows that have true within this series. So this is just our first introduction to pandas and its filtering. But we're going to do some more operations with it. We're still learning these functions. And we're going to use these for some sales-based data analytics tomorrow. So that's what our aim is. So with this, I'll end the session here. And because we're almost off time. But uh, before we end the session, a very humble request, as always, I request you to kindly fill this link so that I get to know whether I'm able to reach you or not. This is the only way through an online session I get to understand if I'm able to uh, reach you or if there are any struggles you're facing and I can help you around with a different way. This is the only way for me to figure that out. So please let me know. There was one query particularly about uh, having the code simultaneously accessed at your end. Um, I haven't looked into that particularly due to time constraints and uh, due to, of course, inability to share code constantly. There is a way to do that. I will implement it before tomorrow's session. So you should be able to access the code as I type at your end. We'll do that by tomorrow as well. So yeah, uh, so that I will incorporate. So request all to please fill this. Meanwhile, uh, I will share all the content in terms of code that we have done till now so that you can have access to the same. So we have basics application, then TTS, and object oriented programming, date time, async and multi-threading, and we started with pandas, right? So these will be uploaded shortly. You will be able to access them ahead. And yeah, so with that, thanks a lot for joining in. And once again, apologies for the slight delays that we had today a couple of times. So we'll make up for it with some 
additional effort tomorrow from my end, right? Yeah, so thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you, have a good night. You too, have a good evening. Bye-bye.